Hi, this is David Wicks, your instructor for EDTC 6433, Teaching with Technology. And in this screencast, I want to just show you quickly how to get started with your Google site. I want you to feel like you've got freedom to make your site however you want to make it, but I also know that there are people who uh, possibly are struggling with getting their site set up, so I'm going to just give you a quick uh, tutorial on that. So when you go to Google Sites, you're going to sites.google.com, and I've already done that, so I'm, I'm seeing a longer URL here now uh, when I got to the page. But if you already have a, a Google account address, you can just enter that in here. Uh, if you don't have one, you can go ahead and, and sign up for one at the top of the page. I already have one and it's just my SPU email address. So I'm going to sign in with that. And because I've already created a site or two or had some a site shared with me, uh, I have a whole list of Google Sites on this page. But you'll probably just see a blank page here and the ability to create one. Or if your teammate has already created the Google Site for you, uh, you'll see that uh, when you log in. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create here. And you've got all sorts of uh, templates that you can use. There's lots in a gallery. And, I, you know, feel free to pick a template if you want to. But I, myself, I'm, I'm kind of plain. I like the, the blank template. So I've got that selected. It's the default. I typically choose the default in PowerPoint or anything else I use. So here I'm going to put in the name of my site. And I, I encourage you to be descriptive here. I'm just trying to put in one that I, I'm pretty sure hasn't been selected. But I encourage you to try to come up with a, a site name that someone could read. So, uh, you know, if you're elementary teachers, that you somehow try to incorporate that into the name of your site. So then I have to uh, type in the code here that's used to um, prevent any kind of bot from signing up for a bunch of accounts. And so once I've done that, I'm either just clicking enter or I'm going up and clicking on the create link. And here you go, I have my site. So obviously that site name uh, there is, is a little bit ugly. You can definitely change that. There's uh, all sorts of things that you can change on this Google site. But what we're interested in is just getting to the collaboration portion. So I'm just going to show you that. So up at the top on the right, uh, there's a new page icon. If you click that link, you'll come to a new page. If you want to name this page collaboration, you type it in right there. Again, you've got the ability to choose from uh, templates. And for this case, I, I think probably the best choice is just to stay with a simple web page. So we just stay with the web page here, and then you can choose the location. And we want this to be at the top level. We want it to be where it can be easily accessed by your team while you're working on the project. So you can um, just put, uh, say, put the page at the top level. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to create that page. Again, create button up here at the top. And there it is. So you're on the collaboration page right now and it's at this top level. This is the way I would maybe approach this project, is I would say, here's phase one, team charter, and this is where I would actually um, have everyone collaborate on the final team charter. Okay, you've got the ability to add comments down here once you get to this point, all right? But remember, you also need individual pages, so how do you get those? Well. We're on this collaboration page. I've possibly entered some things. And by the way, the way I would continue to do this is after we finished phase one, um, I might just um, slide that down and start phase two uh, here. Okay, you can make pages for it. Again, this is this is just a suggestion, and it's probably not even the best idea. There, somebody will come up with something a lot better than this in the class. So uh, then from here, uh, I remember I'm trying to get those uh, individual pages. So I'm going to say save so that I save my collaboration page. 
And now, while I have my collaboration page selected, if I go back to new page, any pages that I create will be uh, children pages, child pages of the collaboration page. Okay, so they'll be under that page. So if I click new page, so I want one for myself. Okay, so I'm just going to put my name in, and I want it to be a web page, and I I, now I don't want it to be beside. I don't want it to be at the same level as the collaboration page. I want it to be under the collaboration page. So I put it under it. Okay. And then I go ahead and click create. And there you go. You see it's under there. So if we've got, I'll save that again. Okay. Now let's say we want to create another page. Uh, so besides my page, we want uh, another student's page. So each person should create their own page. So you create your page, and when you've got your page created, this is mine. Uh, I can go click on this little edit uh, page, click on that little pencil, and now I can start and I can put, here's my phase one and team charter. I'll put that up here. And then I can put the answers to the questions uh, here. And then again, my suggestion is when it comes time for phase two, I come up here, I put phase two, and I do that, well, my ideas about that phase. So I just have this one page, and I'm moving it so that the newest content's at the top so my teammates can see it easily. Okay, I want to save that. And so the next person comes into the site and they're looking around. They've logged in. And let's say that they're, they've clicked on my page right now and they click um, new page. Well, there's a good chance there that they might create a child page and at that time end up uh, creating a sub page uh, for me. But that's not what they want to do. So the, the, if you want to create a sub page, click on the, the link where you want the page to be under, then create a new page. So let's say this is my son, Luke Wicks. You click that, and we want this to be a web page as well. We want it not at the top level, we want it under collaboration. And so we click there and we click create. Okay, now we've got uh, those two pages. The next team member comes in does the same thing. Let's say somebody accidentally does put it under Luke Wix. So here we've got Luke Wix, we've saved that, and they're looking around the site. The last place they look is on Luke's page, and they go to create, and they remember that it's supposed to be a child page, and they're not really reading that it's going to be put under Luke. Uh, so they go ahead and select that, they click create, oh, they name their page first. Uh, we'll have this be my wife, although she wouldn't make this mistake. And so we click Create. And so there you go. You, and you're not seeing it because in the settings, um, it's under this page. If we were actually on Luke Wick's page, then we see that there's a sub-page here, Michelle Wick's. Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's almost like it's lost. We don't know where it went to. Uh, but if you want to get rid of it, you know, when you do find it, when you track it down to where it maybe is actually at, click there. You're on the page. If you go to More, and there's just a Delete Page link. And you really want to get rid of it? Yes. We delete it. Now we put it in the right place. We click on Collaboration. We go to the page, New Page. Say Michelle Wicks. I uh, want it to be a web page and we want to put it under collaboration and create. And once I had to add my daughter, I'd have my whole team and we would be ready to go. So hopefully that uh, gets you a, a head start on the project so that you can focus on the collaboration. Uh, let me know if you have questions. Have a great day.